hi, Rachel. Thanks so much for joining me. I'm so excited to have you on. How I'm excited to be here. Thank you for having me on here. Awesome. So how have things been going? Like, what have you been up to this year so far? This year, I've actually been taking a little bit of a break from social media stuff for just a few weeks while I sort of plan out what I want 2022 to hold. Um, I've been doing a lot of writing, a lot of um, contacting venues and sort of trying to figure out um, a tour or what music I'll be releasing this year. And um, so right now things sort of hinge on the new variant, but um, I have a lot of plans for 2022 and I've been working on them. So I'm excited to get the ball rolling. That's so exciting. I'm excited to hear what you have planned. So let's just get right into it. Um, I honestly think you're such a great songwriter and you're so talented. And like, what made you get into music and songwriting in the first place? <laughs> well, first of all, thank you so much because coming from you, I think that you're an amazing musician as well. Oh, so that means a lot coming from you. Um, I first got into writing before I got into music. My mom is an English teacher and she had me writing poetry from a really young age. I mean, I remember writing poems whenever I was in kindergarten. Um, and so she really instilled in me to always be writing and doing creative writing in many different ways. And then I started taking piano lessons whenever I was nine to sort of one up a classroom rival that I had. And um, I, along the way, whenever I started playing piano and I was also doing the writing, it just sort of made sense to blend those two things together. And um, so I wrote a lot of very angsty music when I was in <laughs> middle school that no one will ever see the light of day of. Um, but um, that's when I started writing music and how I got into doing songwriting and everything like that. And um, really fell in love with country music whenever I was in college. Fell in love with um, the pageant material album from Casey Musgraves. And I think that that's really evident in a lot of my songwriting. And so yeah, that, that's how I got started in this whole, uh, whole business. That's, yeah, that's awesome. I, I love how you like, you wanted to one up a classmate <laughs> and that's kind of how it started. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was always that kid that was trying to get that top grade in class and everything like that. And so I'm sure that was really annoying to my classmates, but that's how I got into music. And if I didn't have that sort of bone in my body of always trying to do that, then I don't know if I ever really would have gotten into it. So thankful for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. So what do you love most about songwriting? Like what's your favorite, favorite thing about it? <laughs> my favorite thing is whenever I'm able to capture a feeling in a song like in a lyric or explain something in a through a metaphor that people may not understand but if you say it through this metaphor or through this imagery then people get it and so that's my favorite thing is whenever I finish a song and I'm like there's not a single lyric I want to change this captures how I felt in that moment or what I'm trying to describe and it's just it's just such a good feeling because I feel like people are going to get it. Like they're going to understand what I'm trying to convey. And so it's a, it's a really nice feeling. <laughs> yeah. And it's such a powerful thing to being able to convey those, that emotion or that moment in a song and have people connect to it. And I think you do such a great job of that. So good. Work. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so let's get into some of your music. And the first song you have for us is uh, one of your songs called Blue Hawaii, which is really fun. And so what, um, so if you could tell us a little bit about that song and like what inspired it. <laughs> so I'm not a big drinker, um, but when I go out, if I get an alcoholic drink, my go-to is a blue Hawaiian. And so this song was inspired from a night where I was sipping on a blue Hawaiian and I had been flirting with this guy that I liked and I thought that he liked me, um, but then he swerved me for this other girl. Oh. And um, I was a little bit tipsy and I went home and I was just like, you know what, I'm going to write this song where I like figure out all the nautical puns that I can use to just like slam this guy. And um, so I spent the whole next day writing all the nautical puns I could think of. Um, and it just turned into this really fun process. And by the time I was finished writing it, I was not even upset in the slightest with this guy <laughs> at all because I was just like, what a fun, funny song. And every time I play it, 
it just brings me like I'm still laughing at all of my jokes that I originally made and so honestly it's kind of hard to play it live because I start laughing at some of the lines still um but it's just really fun um light-hearted and I love um you know sort of beachy vibes and Annette Funicello and the Beach Boys and so getting to combine those influences with like sort of like the Pistol Annie's Casey Musgrave sass in my songwriting was just a really fun process. And so I released that this past summer and it was just a really fun summer song to release. <laughs> <laughs> what's your favorite line from it? What's your favorite pun? If you can. Um, <laughs> I, I go back and forth, um, but I think that I really like the line in the, the bridge that says, um, think I'll forever just swim in this crystal blue bay, but if I, have, if I ever make it back to the continental USA, don't expect a souvenir or a lay from me. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's my favorite. See what you did there. In you and them. <laughs> so what, what is actually in a blue Hawaiian? I don't know. Like in the drink. Um, <laughs> You know, I should probably be able to answer that question considering how many of them I would <laughs> consume. Um, but I know there's some sort of rum mm. and it's also something that does not taste like alcohol because I do not drink beverages that really taste <laughs> like alcohol. <laughs> um, so I know it's a rum drink of some kind and it's blue. It's probably so, blue to Curacao or Curacao. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure that it has in that too. Um but it's like pineapple-y, coconut-y sort of thing. <laughs> well, I was guessing. <laughs> That's all right. You don't need to know what's in it as long as it tastes good. Yeah, I'm going to look up a recipe after this. To yeah. Sure I know what I've been drinking. <laughs> well, here is Blue Hawaii. So I love that song. <laughs> And I love how it makes us feel like we're on a beach, even though it's the middle of winter and it's freezing out, or at least where I am anyways. You guys got a lot of snow in Tennessee, didn't you, recently? Yeah, we just got a whole bunch of snow this past weekend, and I went sledding, and oh, it nice. was my time. <laughs> yeah, we just got, like, I'm in Ontario, Canada, so we just got hit with a major snowstorm the other day. So there's, like, snow oh, like, up day here. <laughs> Major snowstorm where you are and major snowstorm where I am are two very different things. Like, yeah. how, much, how much is a major snowstorm where you are? Um, you got a few feet. Like, I don't know. I think we had about 20 or 30 centimeters. I don't know how many feet that is. So. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah, I mean, pretty much everything was shut down in Tennessee, and I think we got, like, a couple inches, like, maybe three or four inches. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's a big difference, but I have to get creative whenever I want to sled. Like, I was scooping snow and piling it into, like, one little area so that I could <laughs> go down a hill. So, yeah, different situation. Yeah. <laughs> but I love snow, so I'm okay with it. So. More snow the better. Anywho, so I love how colorful your style is, and I know you put a lot of work into your own photos and doing your own artwork and videos. So what's your creative process like for that? You know, I really see things like whenever I get a vision for a song, I pretty much immediately start seeing how I want that to be portrayed. So like through the imagery, through anything that I've been saying in the song, like how I want that to be exemplified. And so um, whenever I was first starting out performing shows and promoting my music, I was really wanting to capture how I wanted my music to make people feel. And so that's a really big um, question I always come back to whenever I'm trying to think of photos I want to put out to promote a show or photos to go with um, a song that I have coming out or something like that. It's like, how do I want these photos to make people feel when they see them or how that tie into the um, song. So that's a central question I always come back to. And usually um, I, whenever I do like an actual song, I work with this incredible photographer in Chattanooga. Her name is Sarah Ann Wagner. And she actually creates all of the um, earrings I wear too. Oh, cool. Um, so 
like these I'm wearing and most of the ones you ever see in photos, she's also created those. And um, it's really nice to work with someone who understands my vision completely. And so um, right now we're going back and forth trying to figure out how we want my next single artwork to look. And so um, it's a really fun process, includes a lot of pinning things on um, Pinterest and getting inspirations a lot from old magazines like Audrey Hepburn's a really yeah. big inspiration for me. Um, I go back a lot to like classic Dolly Parton in the 70s, a lot of Linda Ronstadt looks like piecing those together, how I want my hair, makeup to look and things. Um, and then it always comes back to the pink and purple, which I feel like is like the soul of my music and figuring out how to incorporate that with the different themes and motifs of the song. And so it's honestly one of my favorite parts of the creative process. There aren't a lot of parts of the creative process I don't enjoy, um, but coming up with the visuals is just one of my absolute favorite things to do. You can really tell you have a lot of fun with it because you the stuff really comes across in your photos and all the work you do. Um, and I think I read, <laughs> and I think I read somewhere that you did graphic design. Like you have a, you went to school for that? Yeah. Um, so I went to college at the University of Tennessee at Chattanooga and I double majored in communications and Spanish. And what I did a lot with communications was learning like social media marketing, branding techniques, um, photography, videography, web design, everything like that. And so right now, while I'm pursuing music, I actually work as a um, multimedia coordinator oh. here in China, you get. And so, um, and so, yeah, it's, it was really helpful to have that background um, because it's, been so helpful especially during the pandemic where we've had to connect with people only like online very, very few times in person um there hasn't been a day where i haven't been thankful that i had that background because um it helps me in so many ways and one of the big ways it helps me is through creating the visuals for things um because i don't always have to outsource everything and you're an absolute pro at that <laughs> <laughs> doing all your stuff in house and doing your own photos and everything like that. So I know that you, uh, you get that too. <laughs> I don't know if I'm a pro, but I figure it out as I go. I was, I'm kind of lucky because my dad's a professional television cameraman. So I have like all the equipment, but like oh, I don't, wow. I don't have the editing, like, so learning how to edit and like do my own photos and stuff has kind of been a process for me, but I don't know. I just like being creative. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's a, it's a fun process, and it's a fun thing to get to do on top of doing the music. Mm -hmm. um, did, what made you get into, like, communications and graphic design? Like, was that part of your music, or was it, like, completely separate? Well, um, I went into school knowing that I wanted to pursue music as a career. Mm -hmm. um, but I had had 10 years of technical training because I had gone to uh, gone through some pretty intense piano training while I was, you know, from nine until I graduated high school. And so I had all that theory and that technique um, to start writing music. And I was, so when I entered college, I knew that I wanted to go to college and complete college, but I was wondering like, what can I do in these four years that will a, be able to get me a job where I can make money to fund my music and B, give me the skills um, that I need to go somewhere with music. And so I just looked at how like a lot of musicians have to be content creators, even if they don't wanna be, they have to be content creators. And how could I get all the skills that I would need in order to succeed and be my own best advocate? Um, and so that is why I chose communications was with music and pursuing music in mind. That's really smart. I like how, I like how you did that. <laughs> Oh, thank you. So, thank you. so speaking of like colors and creativity, the next song you picked was Coat of, Mel Coat of Many Colors by Dolly Parton. So what made you pick this song? Well, I'm a huge Dolly Parton fan. Um, grew up going to Dollywood on most weekends, had season pass. Um, oh, really? <laughs> her, Dollywood is only like 30, 45 minutes from where I grew up. And so, um, I love Dolly Parton so much and I didn't realize that Dolly Parton was like a worldwide phenomenon because I was like oh it's just Dolly she's just up the road you know at Dollywood <laughs> um, and 
this song, Coat of Many Colors, was actually the first country song that I learned to audition for. Um, in fifth grade, they were having a talent show, and I was so bashful, and I had never really sung in public before, um, because it just, I was too shy, and they said, like, if you want to audition for anything in the fifth grade talent show, you have to audition with this Coat of Many Colors song from Dolly Parton, and so I learned it, and um, did not get the part. Oh no! <laughs> I was way too bashful and shy, and um, there was a girl that was much more charismatic than I did who got the part. But the song just stuck with me because um, I just—it was probably one of the first times where I had really listened to a song and dove into the lyrics because I had to memorize the lyrics oh. to sing it. And I was just blown away with how she told her story, but it paralleled with like this biblical story and how she was able to convey her emotions through that. And it just really resonated with me. And it's still one of my favorite songs to listen to because I, it's just songwriting genius in my opinion. So I felt like I had to play that tonight because um, it's one of my big inspirations and she's one of my big inspirations. Well, it is such a great song, and I love the story of how she wrote it on the back of um, Porter Wagner's um, dry cleaning ticket, and she just kind of <laughs> wrote it, like, whatever, and then it became a big hit. <laughs> so you never know where it's going to come from. So here is Coat of Many Colors by Dolly Parton. How can you not love Dolly? She's so good. I so love her so much. <laughs> So at the beginning of 2020, I believe, you launched a, your own little tour called the Kitten Coma Tour, and you're performing at cat cafes and raising money for feline rescue, but the pandemic cut it short. So what inspired you to do that? It's such a fun concept. I love that. Oh, thank you. Um, first of all, it's sort of a bizarre name for the tour if you don't know my song that I wrote about it. Um, so backstory, um, when I was in school, my brother's girlfriend rescued this kitten behind a dumpster, but where they lived, they couldn't take care of it. So for the summer, my sister and I took care of this kitten and it was like all we did was take care of this cat. I gained so much weight that summer because I would not go to the gym. I would not go outside. I would just take this kitten with me everywhere. <laughs> and um, so I said that I was like in a kitten coma because <laughs> I was just, like completely in love with this kitten. I couldn't do anything without this cat. And um, it inspired me to pretty much write a love song to this cat, um, called the kitten song. And whenever I was, um, about to graduate from college, I was trying to find venues to play at. I didn't really have a big following or anything like that, but I had this song about cats and there was a new cat cafe that was opening up in, um, Chattanooga. And I was like, you know what? have the song about cats. There's a cat cafe opening up. I don't even know if they're going to have live music there. Let me just contact them. And they loved it. They loved the song. And through playing there and the great experience I had there, realized that there was a huge network of cat cafes. There's like 96, there were 96 at the time I launched the cat oh, cafe. Wow. I'm sure that there are even more in the United States. And so um, I just thought, you know, it, I'm sure that you you know how difficult it is to sort of build up a touring, um, like touring cities. Whenever you go somewhere new, they're like, well, have you played here before? Or why would we let you come play at our venue if you don't even have a fan base here? Um, and so I was trying to figure out a way to get to these different cities and meet people and connect with people through my music. Um, and so I realized that cat cafes are very welcoming places and they have <laughs> Approach. they hadn't been inundated with requests to have musicians play there because it's not a common thing and so um that's how the kitten coma tour was born and i got through a few um different cities and it was just the funnest thing i met a lot of people there who still really support my music and um all throughout the pandemic even though the tour was cut short they um they're still supporting my music. And so once, you know, the pandemic is really handled and settled and in control, I do think that I'm going to get back out there and play at more cat cafes because it's just such a fun environment to play in. There are like 30 cats at these cat cafes. <laughs> Have you ever been to a cat cafe? 
Yeah, I have actually there. I've been to, I'm in Canada, in Canada. So <laughs> I've been to one in Toronto and one in Montreal. Um, but yeah, yeah, they're, they're such a fun idea. <laughs> yeah, it's just a fun place to go because, um, you know, a lot of times there's that, that tension whenever you get on stage of like, I don't want to mess up, I don't want to mess up. And whenever you're playing with cats around you, like they will cause something to mess up. So it's not a matter of if something's going to mess up, it's when. And so it sort of breaks that ice of trying to be a perfectionist because you cannot be perfect. You can't do a perfect set when there are 30 cats around. <laughs> do the cats like the music? They actually do. They do. Um, I don't, whenever I play at cat cafes, I don't play like super loud, belty music. I just play more chill acoustic sets. And yeah, the cats and seem to enjoy it a little bit too much. <laughs> they crawl up my lap. They jump up on my piano. Um, they just pretty much swarm me whenever I'm playing. So yeah. <laughs> it's There's nothing wrong different. with that. <laughs> yeah. All I want is cats to come sit on me. My cat, I have two cats, and my one cat hates it when I sing, and he will yell at me and occasionally bite my feet, so. Oh, gosh. Try not to take it yeah, personally. My, <laughs> yeah, my dog, uh, back home at my parents' house, anytime I sing a certain note, like, above a B flat, he loses his mind, <laughs> and so I try not to take it personally. <laughs> I also saw that you did little coloring pages, like printable coloring pages for that tour. That was such a cute idea. Did you oh, like, I'm assuming you, you uh, created them yourself with your graphic design? Yeah, yeah, I created them myself and I, it was born, that idea came from, um, I am always socially awkward <laughs> and whenever I go somewhere by myself, I am always like, really nervous and I have a lot of anxiety about it because like what am I going to do am I just going to sit there and like watch someone play for a long time and like I don't have anything to do I'm just going to fidget or I'm going to drink too much or I'm going to eat way too many bar snacks like I remember one time I took a journal to this place where like someone was playing because like I felt so awkward I didn't know what to do with myself and so um, I started making coloring sheets with my own lyrics and taking coloring um, pencils and things like that where I was playing. And so if people were there and they wanted to enjoy the music, but they also didn't want to feel awkward, they could have something to do while they're sitting there. And um, it's, it's really fun. And um, whenever I play like bars or cat cafes or things like that, where it's not like a show you know, that people are sitting and like the lights are dark. They have like a table in front of them. Then I take my coloring sheets with me. That's such a cute idea. I love how you're like thinking about other people too. Me. Oh, thank uh, you. <laughs> um, so the next song you have for us is High School Reunion, which is one of your songs. Um, <laughs> did you like high school? Was high school your thing? <laughs> Um, I don't know. Um, I was very involved in high school. Um, I was class president all four years and I was valedictorian. Um, I definitely was not popular. <laughs> I was that like overachiever person. And um, I wrote High School Reunion because um, as class president my senior year of high school, my duty is that I have to plan every single high school reunion for the rest of my life. Oh, really? And yeah. Yeah. But I don't know if that's <laughs> how it is everywhere, but at my school, that's how it is. And so um, right before the pandemic, I was getting lunch with one of my fellow class officers and he made a, some offhand remark of, you know, we're going to have to start planning our high school reunion in a few years. And it was like so far on in the back of my mind, like I was not even thinking about it. And it hit me um, that I was going to have to start planning it in a few years. And then the pandemic hit and I moved home to save rent. And so I was like sleeping in the same twin bed that I was sleeping in whenever I was in high school. And I was like, how did this happen? <laughs> I thought by this point I was going to be like rich, famous, like whatever, you know, <laughs> some hot shot. And um, here I was you know, like five years later, sleeping in my twin bed. And um, so I started out, started writing this song on my parents' front porch. And it was the most depressing, sad song ever. It started out with a lyric. It's really hard, oh my Lord, to find dreams you can't afford. Um, because it costs so much money to pursue a career in music. And um, 
then it just hit me like, you know, I'm not where I want to be, but very few people are. And we can just keep on going for it, keep on trying, because that's all we can do. And sort of lean on each other for support because life is hard. It's not what we thought it was going to be, especially not during a pandemic. <laughs> and um, so that's what inspired that's what inspired high school reunion. Yeah, and I think a lot of people do really relate to that because, you know, you, <laughs> when you leave school, you think, oh, you know, I can do anything I want, you know, and then you realize you need money and place to live and food <laughs> and all this other stuff that you didn't really plan for. And there's nothing wrong with moving back home, okay? <laughs> I'm, yeah. I'm at my parents' house too, so it's nothing yeah. wrong. <laughs> but yeah, and I totally get it. And um, I think it's such a powerful message but you did it in such a fun kind of way that it's not it's not depressing it's there's still that hope in that song which what I which is what I really love about it yeah you know that's a lot of, that's a theme and a lot of my music is like trying to find real issues but find ways to spin it where it's more funny and lighthearted. because most of the time if I can laugh at a situation then I can get through the situation yeah. like if I can find a way of being like this is kind of like a sitcom or like if I was watching this on a television show I would think this is funny um like high school like valedictorian class president comes back to like, <laughs> sleep with her twin bed has like zero dollars in her bank account like it's just like that irony you know mm -hmm. um so so yeah you gotta find ways to laugh at life or it'll just knock you on your butt <laughs> Hey, and it's a journey. We're all on our own journeys, and it's supposed to be fun, I think. Yeah. Most of the time. <laughs> well, anyway, here is High School Reunion. So, I hear you're a big Casey Musgraves fan, which you mentioned kind of in the beginning. What did you think of her new album? I, you know, I had mixed feelings about her new album. <laughs> um, I, overall, you know, any Casey Musgraves album is light years beyond most albums in my opinion because I am just a huge fan of her. Um, but I still have a special place in my heart for pageant material. I think that'll always be like my number one. Um, and Golden Hour is just perfection. Um, so maybe, maybe this album is gonna grow on me a little bit more. I'm about to go to the tour um, in Nashville and so Maybe once I see it like come to life on stage, then I will, you know, fall in love with it more. But there are a lot of bops on it, like Breadwinner, Justified, Camera Roll, Cherry Blossom. I mean, there's, she's a great songwriter. She'll, she's always going to be a huge inspiration to me. Um, and so, so yeah, that's, that's how I feel about Star Cross. I haven't seen the, the movie though. Have you seen the visual album that she has on Paramount Plus? No, I haven't. I was actually going to ask you if you've seen it. Um, I don't really, yeah. like, I only have Netflix, and I can't, like, I don't bother with, like, the other, like, streaming platforms, so. I'm like, I know. <laughs> Maybe if she releases it on YouTube, then I'll be able to watch it, but I'm too broke. <laughs> it's a good yeah. Um, but, yeah, pageant material has just, it really opened my eyes to the world of country music, and that it can, there's, there's ways to incorporate so many different things in country music, like you can make jokes in it. You can tell really heartfelt stories. Um, there's just such an array of things that you can do through that songwriting. And if I hadn't listened to pageant material, I don't think I would have realized that. Um, and so really grateful for all of Casey Musgrave's songwriting. Yeah, she is really good. And that pageant material album is such an underrated album. It's like kind of like her least sort of known or selling one, I guess. But it's, I think it's one of her best ones, <laughs> for sure. Yeah, it's a real no-skip album. And I was not a huge listener of country music um, until that point. And I remember someone had made, like, an offhand remark, like, oh, you got to listen to the song about biscuits. And whenever <laughs> I first heard that, I was like, someone wrote a song about biscuits? Okay, <laughs> let me listen to it and see, like, how stupid this song is. And then I listened to it, and I was like, <gasps> it was like the heavens opened up, and I was like, this is my sense of humor. I get this because I came from a small town, like, raised in the South. Like, it was exactly my brand, 
and it just spoke to me so much. Um, it's, it is just a top tier album. Definitely is. <laughs> so we'll play, um, you had pageant material off that album, right? Mm -hmm. uh, pageant material. <laughs> so here is pageant material by Casey Musgraves. That really, <laughs> that really is such a great song. And again, as I said, such an underrated album. So if you haven't heard it yet, go listen to it. You won't be disappointed. <laughs> so um, I was going to ask you, what is country music to you? Like, what does it mean to you? Or how do you see country music? Um, well, personally, I, I get the question, like, why do I make country music? Um, and I think that the answer for me is it's really like cultural. Um, growing up in a small town in Tennessee, it was the sounds that surrounded me growing up. And so it just feels like at the very essence of me, like that is how I communicate through music. Um, and so that's what really um, drew me to country music. But overall, what I really think country music is, is brilliant songwriting that finds the extraordinary in the ordinary because it relates to so many people you know a lot of country music is not about people that are like super rich and like making it big it's a lot of like heartbreak things or people that are going to work and just like making ends meet and finding beautiful moments in everyday life and I think that that is so much more impactful than people that are writing music about, you know, these big lofty things that nobody can relate to because it makes people realize the beauty in their life, even though, you know, if they're not super wealthy or they haven't made it as much as they do, like if people can find themselves in the songs that people write and think like, oh wait, I had never looked at that situation that way. This is actually really cool my life is actually pretty cool. This is a really nice thing that I have going on for me. And so I think that that's what country music is and what it's about. Oh, I love that. <laughs> that was such a great explanation of country music. I totally agree. And it, it well, is really, you know, that real, it's something that's real. And um, mm -hmm. that's, a, and the songwriting, I think, is a, such an, obviously a big important part of country music. And they, they really do a good job of, in Nashville anyway, or just in general, country music, of really sticking to good songs. <laughs> that being the main focus. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. um, Speaking of great songs, the next song uh, you picked is one of yours called Baggage. And I read that it was inspired by a dating experience that didn't go so well <laughs> at the start of the pandemic last year. So what happened? Yeah, um, so I had... Um, at the start of the pandemic, I don't know why, but I was like, you know what? I can't go out and meet anyone in person. Let me get on a dating app and meet someone. And so I did. And um, we did not date for that long. Like literally, I think four days we were like <laughs> officially dating or whatever. <laughs> and um, just, we had an argument and he said like, you have too much baggage. I can't deal with you. And I was like, okay, whatever. And like, I was sad for a few days. And at that same time, I was having to move out of the house I was living in and move back home with my parents. And so like, I had all this physical baggage all around me of where I was trying to pack up everything. And like, I remember I was in my bed and I was really sad. And I looked over and I had all like my show clothes. They're like pink and sparkly and fun, like going into one of my suitcases that was like spilling out. And I looked in the mirror in front of my bed and I was like, he just sees me for my baggage, but I could be the whole package. <laughs> and it like pulled me out of the dumps. And I was like, that's a song. And um, so I started writing baggage and once again, sort of like how I felt about Blue Hawaii, the process of writing baggage, like by the end of it, I was completely over the breakup, did not care at all about this guy. and. Um, had this really fun song. And so songwriting is also a really healing experience for me. <laughs> so finding that, like, f like I said before, that way to look at it where it's like, oh, you say I have too much baggage, but I'm the whole package. And just like finding that way to twist the, situ the situation. Um, and so that's, that's what inspired baggage. And 
um, currently it's my favorite song to perform live um, because it's so much fun and it's my most well-known song among like people that come to my shows and so they um, sing along like the beginning of the chorus with me and that's just a really fun experience and um, my band really likes playing it too because they can do fun little solos on it and so um, I am very happy that I got on that dating app and met that guy um, because if I didn't then I would not have baggage <laughs> and it's just fun. See, it all works out in the end. May not be the way I think it does, but <laughs> eventually yeah. it works out. <laughs> so that's awesome. I love the story behind that. And I know I saw you on um a little while ago on TikTok doing like the funny hinge dating, like uh, on like the audio or something. It was really <laughs> Yeah, you know, I have not found Prince Charming on Hinge, but I have found quite a bit of comedy and songwriting <laughs> material, so I'll probably stay on there a while. <laughs> well, you know, can't you know if you can't have you know Prince Charming, you may as well have songs. And uh, yeah, <laughs> well, let's get to that song. So here is Baggage. I really like the lyric video you did for that song, by the way. Oh, thank you. I actually drew all of those little, like, suitcases and all of the different images that you see in that, and so that was a really fun process, getting to animate all of that in, and um, took me forever, but I was really happy with how it came out. Yeah, yeah, I bet it took a while. <laughs> all right, so we're going to do five sort of quick questions, like a fast round thing, so whatever comes to your mind first, it's just fun, like, whatever. <laughs> All right, so the first question is, your favorite snack food? Um, right now, my favorite snack food is popcorn. I eat, like, a whole bag a night. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, one place you would love to travel to? Mm, right now, I am watching Father Brown, and so um, I would really like to go to the English countryside and see all of that. Nice. Uh, favorite holiday? Christmas. Yeah. I still have my Christmas tree up and it will stay up for another few months as I try to like milk every last drop <laughs> of Christmas. <laughs> nice. Uh, cats or dogs? Okay, everybody <laughs> think that I would say cats because I go to the cat cafes, but I l honestly equally love cats and dogs. I just love animals. I think that that came from me being really socially awkward. Like anytime I would go to a place and there was a cat or dog that I could like connect with I would much rather do that than have to connect with a human um <laughs> and so both I love animals so much um favorite tv show oh gosh um that's so difficult I love so many <laughs> shows um I'm a huge fan of The Office, New Girl, Brooklyn Nine-Nine, Chuck, like so many psych so many stuff parks and rec i could go on um yeah i love television <laughs> <laughs> i actually read in one of your other interviews that if you weren't um a country artist you'd do comedy yeah i really really like um analyzing comedy and um like one of my dreams would be to like host Saturday Night Live and be the musical guest on it because I just think that that's so cool and the the writing and everything that goes into comedy um just a huge comedy nerd <laughs> so yeah if I wasn't doing songwriting and I didn't have that urge to do that I would probably be trying to do like comedy writing that's a that's a tough gig but I like yeah. <laughs> but you can um but you do kind of incorporate that a little bit that humor into your songs so. Yeah, yeah, that's why it's fun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Awesome. So uh, where can people find you? Like online? Um, yeah, if you follow at Rachel McIntyre Smith, um, I'm on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, Spotify, Apple Music, um, and McIntyre is not spelled like Reba. It's <laughs> M-C-I-N-T-Y-R-E. Um, and rachelmcintyresmith.com on YouTube. Um, and like I said, I'm going to be having some fun announcements coming out soon about new music and shows and everything. And so people can stay tuned for all that. 
Awesome. And I'll have all that information in the show description. So you can just go check that out and make sure you follow her because she is awesome. And uh, awesome. yeah. So before we end, um, what is the last song you have for us? The last song that I want to play is um, called Find Yourself by Lucas Nelson and Promise of the Real. Um, have you ever listened to Lucas Nelson before, Laura? No, I've actually never heard of him until you uh, sent him. Oh my me. gosh. Okay, so Lucas Nelson is Willie Nelson's son. Oh, okay. Yeah. And he is just doing an amazing, like he's doing his own thing in music and he is so amazing. His songwriting his live performance, I just saw him live a few months ago. Um, he is one of my absolute favorite artists. And um, this song, Find Yourself, was the first song that I had listened to by him that made me a huge fan. And it really inspired the sounds for my song Baggage and um, the sort of vibe for that song. And so yeah, huge Lucas Nelson fan. Anybody who has not heard of him, needs to listen to him and needs to listen to the song right now. <laughs> awesome. And you're going to listen to the song right now. Well, thank you so much, Rachel. This has been awesome. So much fun. I've, been so, I've really enjoyed talking to you about everything you've been doing and all the stories behind your songs. And yeah, thanks so much. And thanks so much for listening and be sure to come back next week or whenever we can get our act together <laughs> for more country music.